Good morning and welcome. I love hearing all the chitter chatter at the beginning of the service. People are going on and chatting. It's a wonderful sound. And we have a new guest today. All the way from Colorado. Welcome Sierra and her parents. <laughs> what a joy to have her with us today. Hi. Hi. Yay. <laughs> well, I do have, um, I know you want to keep talking. It's really wonderful that you want to do that because we aren't going to have a coffee hour, so we're going to miss that. But I do want to announce the, our annual meeting is going to be at 1130. And so that means you're going to run home and hop on Zoom. Now, I know that you didn't get the ballots, so Chris passed them out. Um, I know that they didn't come in the email, so now you have them for when you go home. Yes. Uh, is the Zoom address on the email? So you're going to see it in Friday's email okay. at the very top. So go to Friday's email and you will find the link. Now you can go back to last Saturday and you'll find the annual report and the agenda, but hopefully you've already downloaded all that or you picked up a copy. If you haven't picked up a hard copy of the annual report, it's out here in front of the office. There's a big pile of them. Yes. Are we going to vote and read this year? Nope. You're going to do that during annual meeting. Okay. And then, oh, you you're going to raise your hand oh. or say yes. So yeah, that's how we do it. But at least you have the names in the slate before you. So um, any other questions? If I can answer them. <laughs> no, no meeting here today. So are there some of you who can't get on Zoom? Are you sure? Because what I can try to do is set us up on a computer. But we have to be really squished together in front of the TV. So, so if you want me to do that, I can't do that with too many people but I can do it with a few. Any? And are there any other questions or announcements? All right, it is, again, it's wonderful to have all of you here. And I'm glad to hear that you're all so interested in the annual meeting and. <clears throat> so Camilla, it will be on just Zoom only. And if you go to Friday's email, you will have the link. The link is there. All right, <laughs> you'll try, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, I mean, if go to someone's house, if they know how to get on Zoom, go to their, go to their house. So that's a great suggestion. So, all right. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And now let us take a deep breath and bring ourselves into this sacred space as the music brings us into worship.
morning. Join me in the call to worship. Happy are we when our treasures cannot be quantified. Happy are we when our knowledge is tempted by mystery. Happy are we when pain is held in the balm of love. Happy are we our song of celebration this morning, Rejoice, Rejoice, it is your insert. Please rise as you are able. be seated. Join me in the prayer of confession. Far too often, O oh God, we desire to look wise in the eyes of the world. We have not spoken truth with our hearts. We have said and done hurtful things to our friends. We have forgotten our true identity, wandering into ways that are not yours. We have lost the path of true worship, focusing on form and words rather than deeds. We've forgotten what true discipleship is, and because of this, you have a quarrel with us. Forgive us and help us live in the, becoming the people you have created and called us to be. People of justice, love, truth, humility, and yes, even foolishness. May we be fools for Christ, embracing our true identity, even in the face of worse scorn God has called us and blesses us when we live in God's ways and not in the world's. God lo God's love embraces us even when we fall short of what God desires for our lives and actions. Know that the God of blessing loves and forgives us with a fierce tenderness. And so, in knowing May our lives and souls be transformed. Let us join our voices together in our opening hymn number 43, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
please be seated. Old Testament reading this morning from Micah 6, 1 through 8. God challenges Israel. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, please your, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord in your enduring foundations of earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord, what God requires. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to do love and kindness and to walk humbly with your God. I think that Sierra proves she hears those holy words from God. <laughs> Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew 5 and 1 through 12. You are invited to follow along, and it starts on page four of your pew Bible in the New Testament. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, false, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us be together in prayer. God of blessing, we have heard the words from scripture, and now as the word is proclaimed, illumine us, humble us. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, your voice of truth and grace. Amen. Every morning on Tuesday, not every morning, every Tuesday morning from 9 to 9.30, Reverend Adrian Donhauser stands at the foot of her steps of her church on Madison Avenue. And she has a blackboard sign next to her, and it says, blessings to go. <laughs> God's grace is meant to be shared. So people walk by her, a lot of people walk by her, she says, some nod, some might say good morning, and maybe about 10 or so stop for a blessing. So she asks them for their name and ask what they want to pray for. And there's some definite themes that come out. A lot of people will pray for their 
sons or daughters. People will pray for a loved one who is sick. Someone might ask for a prayer for someone in their family who is addicted. Some might pray for a job interview that's coming up. And others pray for, want prayers for the grief that they feel for the world. And she said, someone always cries. But some are curious and just want a good start to the day. And then there's the bus drivers who stop at the red light right in front of her church, open their door and ask for a quick blessing before they have to close the door and go through the green light. And the one time there was a woman who grabbed her off the street and said, you've got to come down to my building and give my doorman a blessing too. So she did. And she always finishes her prayers with a blessing. In the name of the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then she draws a cross on their forehead. Gives me ideas. <laughs> Reverend Don Hauser admits that most walk by and they're probably confused about what a blessing is and what a blessing does. And it's for good reason. Jonathan Merritt, a contributing editor for the Atlantic magazine, explains, these days the word blessing is often reduced to a description of material wealth, cultural privilege, and just plain good luck. We don't live in a culture of blessing, he says. We live in a culture of hashtag blessed. Got a new car for Christmas? Hashtag blessed. Been married for 30 years? Count your hashtag blessings. There's nothing wrong with being grateful for what you have. But Jesus' beatitudes illustrate God's blessings were very different. Kate Bowler in her book, Good Enough, writes, as Christians, we cross-stitch our blessings on pillows or we do fancy script on pieces of paper or tattoo them on our body. In doing so, we perhaps forget that Jesus turned the idea of what makes us blessed upside down. In reality, Jesus' beatitude should leave some of us wide-eyed and wondering and others of us crying with tears of relief. If we truly understand what the Beatitudes are saying, most of us should feel a little bit uncomfortable because God is celebrating who most of us are trying so hard not to be dependent, desperate, and needy. But Jesus' blessings are for us too. And as much as we hate to admit it, at some point in our lives, we too will be dependent, needy, desperate, foolish, rejected, fearful, and angry. Life is downright hard at times. And we feel we might crumble under the weight of it at times. Truth is, when we feel fragile, alone, and weak, that's when we need God's blessing the most, isn't it? And more often than not, life's difficulties are what drive us to God. Approaching God from a place of need is one of the most faithful things that you can do though. But what is a blessing? What is a blessing? What does it do? A blessing bestows upon us God's favor, warmth, and protection. That's what we hope for. It seeps deep into the marrow of our suffering, hardship, and woundedness, and enfolds us into God's 
goodness, grace, and loving kindness. A blessing seeks wholeness and makes forgiveness possible. John O'Donohue, in his book, To Bless the Space Between Us, tells a wonderful story when he became a new priest at age 25. One of the first things he did was visit a community of sisters. And so an the oldest sister opened the door when he came in and she knew that he was coming and she knew that he was a brand new priest. So she invited him in and she said, give me a blessing, Father. So she got on her knees and he tried his hardest to give the most intimate blessing that he could. And then she got up and he's like thinking, this is really ironic. Here I am, a new priest, and this woman has been in this community for 60 years in the silence and in the darkness, praying to God. It should be her that gives a blessing to me. So he asks her for one. She was so mortified and she started mumbling and ran out of the room. Which made John O'Donohue question, who has the power and authority to bless? Who do you think? All of us, yeah. All of us, we all do. God said to Abraham, you are blessed to be a blessing. That should give us a hint right there in Genesis. But what do we bless with? And where do we bless from? Those are other questions that John O'Donohue asked. And he says this, to bless is to reach below the surface of your mind and beyond your ego, down into the depths of your very soul. The soul is a place that is untouched by this life. It's where God claims you and rests within you. So, anytime you take another into the care of your heart, the power to bless is already inside you. Whether that person is someone you have loved for years or walking be by you on the sidewalk, either in Falmouth or on Madison Avenue, you can bless them. The soul is the well from which you draw up blessings. We have no idea how blessings affect each other. But blessing is a powerful and positive intention that can transform people and situations. And if you believe in it, blessing will awaken and draw forth possibilities you can't even imagine. So in a moment, I'm going to be reading Kate Bowler's interpretation of the Beatitudes. And often when we listen to the Beatitudes, we're often tempted to see where we fit in. You know, which one can we plug into? What, what is it that I feel like right now? But I want you to listen with different ears this morning. I want you to listen for ears from men like Tyre Nichols or George Floyd. I want you to listen with the ears of their families. I want you to listen to ears from being from the black community in Memphis and all over the country. I also want you to listen with ears of those in the Asian community this past week who have had mass murders in their communities. I want you to listen with ears for all Asians in our country. I want you to listen with ears for the immigrant who is fleeing war and violence in their own country, seeking a safe place to be. I want you to listen with ears of the less abled person the addict, 
and the persecuted one who dares to speak truth to power and to stand up for those who Jesus blesses. Those are the ears that I invite you to listen to these Beatitudes with. Blessed are you when you lose sleep over what troubles you. Blessed are you who have no energy to do anything but fret. The kingdom of God is here and now. Blessed are those when they are drowning in grief, when wave after wave of grief is crashing over them. And just when they thought they were feeling okay, they are reminded of what they lost. God promises to comfort them. Blessed are those when they feel silenced and are afraid to speak up, when those who feel forgotten and left out, those who feel small and think their life doesn't matter, the whole world is theirs. Blessed are those when they are starving for justice, when the world around them seems so unfair, they just want to scream, but no one is listening. May justice flow like a river. Blessed are those when someone hurts them, when they feel offended and they don't return an insult for an insult. Instead, they forgive, recognizing the number of times that they have been forgiven. Blessed are those when stripped away, they're stripped away of all the extras and see the world as it is, broken, tender, fragile, and beautiful. Those are the same eyes that see God in everything. Blessed are those who take the hard road, the one that doesn't opt for any shortcuts of rage, resentment, or unkind words, that doesn't pave over with trite niceties, but walks towards peacemaking, for they are God's children. Blessed are those who face hardships of all sorts, insults and hurts and feelings and lies and vindictive neighbors. Blessed are those when they usher in the kingdom of God of love, justice, compassion and peace and forgiveness even when it's really hard. Blessed are we, all of us, the imperfect and don't have it all together. We are still God's beloved. Amen. Let us join together in the beatitude acclamation found in your order of worship. <clears throat> Wonderful is the God of Christ who gathers the poor of the earth. Glorious is our God who wipes away the tears of sorrow. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gives inheritance to the meek. Glorious is our God who satisfies the hunger of the just. Wonderful is the God of Christ who gives mercy to the merciful. Glorious God who, who gives vision to the pure in heart. Wonderful is the God of Christ who adopts the peacemakers. Glorious is our God who lifts high the persecuted. Wonderful is the God of Christ who finds the lost. Glorious is our God who awakens the dead. Let us join our voices together in our responsive hymn, Blessed Are They, which is an insert in your order of worship. You may rise as you are able.
please be seated. After the pastoral prayer, you will be invited to speak your joys and concern. If you want to keep them in the silence of your heart, that is okay. But when we speak them, we all together say, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. And so let us be together in prayer this day. Eternal God, you have laid before us a path of wholeness. You have called us to be a genuine community, to love and to care for one another. You give us the gift of fellowship that we might help and support one another. All of creation reflects the overflowing of your love. There is no prayer that we may offer that is not already close to your heart. So we offer these prayers knowing that you will hear them with hope that in saying these words aloud, our hearts would be renewed in the love for all you have made. We pray for your good earth where we have contributed to the ravishing of your creation. We pray forgiveness and awareness. We pray for those caught in the bind of economic hardship and those suffering unemployment and underemployment. We pray for those who can't find an affordable place to live on the Cape. May our communities join together to seek change. We pray for those waiting in fear to see what their future will hold. Where we may be of service, lead us, O oh God, and give us strength to follow. Open our eyes to people living with addiction, mental and emotional illness, to those who are outcast and suffering. We pray for the victims of gun violence this past week and their families. May we work to make the places we go safe for all. Help us to bring your shalom. Speak your word to us and through us that we may give hope to a hurting world. Make this church the image of your kingdom and help us to follow your way. Merciful God, as we reflect on those we love and care for, our families, neighbors, our church, our nation, our world, even our enemies receive our concerns and hopes and dreams for each of them. We pray for healing and strength for all those we lift in prayer this day, whether we speak our joys and concerns out loud or in the silence of our hearts. And so I lift up Karen Cole, who is in the hospital. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. For Tyre Nichols' family, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. God and community, holy and one, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God blesses us, we bless the community and people around us here in North Falmouth and the Greater Cape. And so now we gladly accept our offerings.
Let us join together in the unison prayer of thanksgiving found in your order of worship. O oh God, you bless us in so many areas of our lives. Help us to have eyes to see and hearts to understand the depth of your love and blessing. Today we give out of that blessedness, dedicating our lives to lives of justice and love, giving all that we are and all that we have to bring about your love, beloved community here and now. Amen. Let us join together in our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision, num number 391 in the red hymnal. God blesses each and every one of you. Go forth and be a blessing to all those you meet today and throughout your week. Go in peace, my friends. Amen. Amen. I do have one last announcement. 
Um, the uh, ballot has been sent out via email. For those of you on Facebook or Zoom who don't have it, you can download it on email. All right, thank you.